In this video, we're going to go over the digitizing tab inside the program preferences. So let's go ahead and open up program preferences. I'm going to click on this program preferences icon right here. And when it opens up, I'm going to click on digitizing. And inside of here, you can make a number of changes to how the software is going to actually create lines or what it's going to do with a a fill, a satin, or a run once you generate it. This this has to do with whenever you're manually digitizing. There's a couple features here. So the outline mode is set to line, and this is what I recommend. Um, you can change it to pen or bezier. And in some people really like working in the bezier, and if you do, I would change it here because every time you open the software, it's going to actually open to that. And it will have that one active. And that's the same thing as coming up here. Um, if I click on, let's say, this artwork tool, it's these options right here, line, pen, and bezier. And it's just different ways of actually creating lines. And you can watch a video on that, on um, how to work with those, those tools or those options for creating, because those work with all the digitizing tabs or tools. I definitely recommend the line for most people. I think it's the easiest to work with in the software. And we'll click on program preferences again and go to the digitizing tab. You can also change um, how things, what happens with the complex fill as you're creating it. I have it set to advanced mode. You also have a standard mode. You can actually tell the software what you want to use for the default angle for your fill stitches. You have 0, 45, 90, and 135. I do recommend 0, but you can change that. So let me go ahead and show you what um, what happens here. I'm going to change this to standard for the complex fill and hit OK. And when I grab my complex fill tool and I create a shape and I get to the end and then I right mouse click, it's automatically, um, because I'm in standard mode, it's automatically filling in the angle line, a start point, and an end point. Does it for me automatically? I don't get the option to set that as I'm creating it. I can always go back and edit it, but it sets it for me. If I come back into preferences and I go to the digitizing tab, if I change that to advanced, and hit OK and I come in and I grab my complex fill tool and I create a shape when I go to right mouse click you can see that my cursor has this little dot next to it and it's telling me to set the angle line it put it at 0 because that's what I said I want the default to be but I can change that and then once I right mouse click one time you'll see a green dot next to my cursor that lets me put the start point wherever I want and the moment I click that I get a red dot next to my cursor to let me choose where I want it to end and I just click where I want it to end and then it generates the stitches so that's the difference between a standard and advanced standard it automatically puts the angle line in and the start and end points for you with advanced mode, you have to specify where you want it to be um, before it generates it. Let's go back into program preferences here and go to the digitizing tab. So the same thing happens with the satin stitch, standard and advanced mode. In standard, it will automatically create a start and end point for you. In advanced mode, you get to actually set that yourself. In a run stitch, you can do the same thing. You can have it standard or advanced. So basically how I prefer to work in the software is I have advanced for complex fill so I can control it. Same thing with the satin stitch, but when it comes to a run stitch, I use the standard. I let it choose where the start and end point is gonna be. Unless I'm doing like a red work style design where I'm creating a bunch of different um, run stitches that connect to each other in some way or another, then I might change it to advanced. But that's how the advanced versus standard works. Either the software will do it for you in standard mode or you choose start and end points and angle lines for complex fill. Um, this option right here, manual, adjust resized manual paths. This is something that's very unique in the software. Um, 
if you open a design and you don't convert it to outlines, you don't have the ability to really um, change the densities and and things like that because you don't have the outlines. But with this, if you check this box, as you resize a design um, that is in stitch mode, it will actually add or delete um, rows of stitches to keep the densities the same. So it's kind of a high level um, feature, but it's really nice that you don't have to convert a design to outlines in order to resize it and have stitches um, get added or subtracted as you resize it. So if I hit OK here, I don't know if I have one open right here. Let's see here. Nope, but I can come back over. Let me just open up this design right here. And I'll save this as a PES design. And I'll hit save. And I'm going to open that one up, the PES version. I'm not going to convert it to outlines. So when I bring it in here, you can see that it just says stitches here. I can't, when I select it, I can't really change anything for it. And so um, if I didn't have that checked, this program preferences right here, it wouldn't regenerate any of the stitches as I resized it. It wouldn't add or subtract any stitches. So, but I do have it selected right here. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see the number of stitches I have in the design is 2884. And I'm going to resize this a little bit here. And you'll notice that the stitch count did change to 2974. So it added stitches because I made it larger. If I make it smaller here, you can see that it actually reduced the stitches. So it's going to kind of rebuild it a little bit because I have that checked. Even though it is just stitches and there are no outlines to it, um, it's just a, a, a feature that, that works pretty good for that. I'm going to hit no on saving this. I'm going to go to program preferences and I'm going to turn that off. The manual adjust. Hit OK. I'm going to open up that same design again. That PES version. I'm not going to convert it to outlines. I'm just going to open it up and you can see I have, um, if I come over here, it just, it does say stitches. So these are, there's no outlines in it. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, make sure you go back and watch the video on learning about the software and how it works because it'll explain um, how outlines work. So with this now um, selected, if I make it larger, again, we're at 2,884 stitches. If I make it larger, I'm still at 2,884 stitches. So it didn't add any, even though I made it larger, it kept the stitches exactly the same. And so if I make it larger, it's going to show fabric through a lot easier because it's just adding space between the stitches. Same thing, if I make this really small, it still has 2,884 stitches, but it just compacted them. So this would be a super, super dense design because um, the density was not changed as it was resized. So I hope that that makes sense, how that tool works. It's all based on if you're in stitches or not. Um, when you open up a file that's in a format other than WAF, if you don't convert it to outlines um, and you resize something, it won't um, add or subtract stitches to keep the density the same unless you have this selected. Um, I don't I don't have it selected. Um, I do sometimes, but um, this is something that it's a nice feature to have. Um, but you do need to be careful with it, just like a lot of other features of software that make changes to designs that are not you know native to the software. Auto split new satin paths. Um, this is something that I definitely recommend having on because as you create a satin stitch, it will automatically kind of split them. So if I come in here and I grab a satin stitch and I just create a simple satin stitch here, you can see that it um, 
the stitches go up and down and it's not very wide here but if I make this wider let's see how wide this is I need to be in millimeters here so I can read this better I'm at 5.1 millimeters so it's still just a regular satin stitch but as I make this larger you can see that it now splits it and so the software will automatically do that for you and this prevents you from making a satin stitch too wide to where it won't even stitch out like it, it won't even produce the satin at the machine if it's too wide and so this just controls that to make sure that um, it splits those when it gets to seven millimeters wide go up to program preferences digitizing you have the ability to work with auto lock stitches too and this is something that's really nice that if you create a design and you forget to put tie in and tie off stitches when you go to save it if you have um, well you you input the distance you want here default is five but anything that any jump that's larger if five millimeters in length or more the software will automatically lock it put a tie in and tie off stitches around it so that it it won't unravel if you go to trim it later if I hit OK here this works with this tool right here this auto lock button so as long as you have that selected um, it will automatically do that for you it automatically lock put if you hover here automatically apply tie in and tie off stitches wherever needed so that has to do this has to do with um, when it decides to do that so that's what that value is so those are the different things that you can do in the digitizing tab for the program preferences